Hello and welcome in to First Pitch. I'm your host, Ty Comer, along with Coach Ryan Riddle. Coach, we've had a really busy week. Uh, part of the reason we're getting to people two days later than normal. Um, but some good causes that we're getting to, to people two days later as well. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but let's start out with the week that we just had. Last week, uh, we played at Guilford on Wednesday. I believe we took a 9 to what was that? No, four to seven. Excuse me, four to seven loss there. Uh, made some mistakes uh, defensively that, that could have helped out um, myself included there. I, I remember that play up the middle could have made that would have kept a whole lot of runs off the board. That being said, we did have the tying run at the plate uh, in the ninth inning, so you got to kind of like the resiliency we showed there. Yeah, and it, you know the resiliency and the uh, will to win and the will to compete has never been a question of this team. Um, really, really, the uh, questions are and the question marks are are the ability to make the proper play at the proper time, make the proper throw, throw it to the right base, um, the ability to drive in a run at third with less than two outs. Um, and, and once we start to learn, because we, we start four, um, at least four freshmen to line up every game. And once we start to learn how to do those things as players and as a team, um, we're, we're going to be just fine. Sometimes sometimes we, we get on the right end of those things, and sometimes we're not on, on the right end of those things. And, and that's really the difference between um, our wins and our losses at this point is, is the execution and the ability to – to, to keep the other team from scoring runs. And it seems like a lot of those runs that the teams score are, are a product of one big inning. Um, and I think we gave up six runs in one inning there uh, at Guilford. And like I said, they only ended up totaling seven. Correct. So uh, it was kind of the same way with Montclair State on uh, Friday night. We had a 9-1 lead uh, going into the top of the eighth inning. We give up eight runs for now a tie game, 9-9. Nine to nine. Uh, but again, the resiliency and, and the will to win, uh, as you said, has always been there. We scored two right in the bottom of the eighth. We don't even wait till the ninth to do it, um, and then close it out in the ninth. Yeah, so we had the game in hand. The game was over, um, basically. But uh, I guess we all know it's never over till it's over, and the last pitch is thrown. But um, the combination of walks, um, giving up extra bases on throws. Um, and some timely base hits for them and a couple of errors for us uh, resulted in an eight-run inning for Montclair State. They had complete, complete uh, in control of the motivation or the momentum in the game. And uh, we were able to calm the fires, um, create a mo little bit of momentum of our own in the, in the bottom of the eighth inning. And uh, we, even had, we even had some mistakes offensively in the bottom of the eighth inning. But uh, we were able to overcome it and score a couple runs and ended up finishing the game off in the, in the top of the ninth. So came out of there with a victory, which, which we needed. Uh, we needed for our confidence and uh, for our coaching staff, it didn't really seem like a victory just because of the way that we went about it. But as for a confidence factor of our team, it, it was good for us. Going back to Wednesday real quick, the, the JVs did, um, they, they traveled to EMU the same day we traveled to Guilford. They took home a uh, nine to five or nine to four win uh, there. So it's nice to see the JV guys go get some experience under the belt. Not only get experience under the belt, but to actually win some. Win sure, some they were. It was a four-four ball game in the eighth. They were able to pull away in the last couple of innings. Uh, Christian Campbell had a big day. I think he went five for six with a home run. And uh, so yeah, it's great for those guys to get experience and not just any experience. Their experience against other college players. It's a college baseball game and. Um, for them, those guys to get that under their belt and, and win games, they're two and two right now, and uh, headed down to Patrick Henry today uh, to play a game at three o'clock this afternoon. Um, so it'll be another good day for the for the JV team. Now Patrick Henry, they're a ranked ball club, correct? They are a ranked ball club. It's going to be a tough tough game for for our JV guys, and and he, you know we got some swing guys on that um, on that team as well. So. Uh, it'll be a good experience. It'll be good for them to get out there and be able to compete and get some at-bats in and, and uh, get themselves better. Right. Okay, so now shifting gears back to uh, this past weekend, Saturday, uh, we come out, Hunter Peck, there's eight strong innings. Another 
um, if you want to call one big inning, I believe they scored three of their four runs in one inning. I think that was they the scored all the four in the fourth inning. Mm -hmm. um, Hunter came out, and uh, Hunter's a, a special talent for us and going to play a huge role in, in the success of this season. And he came out and didn't have a he didn't have an off speed pitch. Uh, he couldn't throw a breaking ball or change up for a strike, and they weren't swinging at it. So he was pitching with just a fastball, and they finally got to him in the fourth uh, for four runs and uh, made it. A, we we were up five to nothing, and made it a five to four ball game. Um, I can remember one pitch in particular that a three hole hitter Hunter threw a change up to him, and it was down. Uh, it wouldn't have been a strike, but the kid swung at it. It was a good quality pitch, and the kid swung at it. And from that point on. Hunter started throwing his breaking pitch for a strike and his changeup for a strike. And when Hunter can do that, he's extremely difficult to hit. Very, difficult. very hard to that. hit. So um, from that point forward, we scored four more runs. The remainder of the game held them down to nothing and, and uh, ended up winning the ball game nine to four. So it was a, it was a good victory uh, for us. It showed us, I mean, we for almost every game we've had adversity We've created some of our, we've created our own adversity in almost every game. And uh, the ones that we can overcome, um, we gain confidence from. Uh, so then Sunday, we come out against a very um, popular, I don't know, how, how would I say that, I guess. Uh, Frostburg is receiving votes in some polls. Uh, so, so a very quality ball club. Uh, we come out. Uh, and they come out and punch us right in the mouth. They do. They're, they're up six to one after three innings. So they scored one in the first. We scored, we hit a solo homer. Uh, Jake Martin led off the game with a solo home run. Uh, they scored one in the bottom of the first. They scored three in the second, two in the third. Uh, punched us in the mouth. We were on our heels. Uh, Joey Pride's on the mound. He's on his heels. Um, and Joey got a little bit upset about what was going on. Uh, went out on the mound and just pound, pounded the zone with fastballs and all-speed pitches and settled down over the next two and two-thirds innings and uh, gave us a chance to win. We, we chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. Uh, I think it was six to four in the sixth inning. Um, the seventh, we scored a run and made it six to five. In the eighth, we scored four. And in the ninth, we scored eight to blow the game wide open and, uh, and come home with a 17-6 victory. And again, Another game where we were we were punched in the mouth, had some adversity, um, stayed within our game plan offensively and defensively, uh, limited their runs. And I'll say this too: Jake Holland came in in the in the sixth inning with two outs and a runner on second base, and just shut them down the remainder of the way. Uh, Trevor Odie came in pitched the last inning, but uh, Holly was the guy that that calmed the fires. Held him down long enough so that we could we could get back. And by the way, he got two hits the rest of the game too. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, another game that we had some adversity and overcame it and gained a tremendous amount of confidence from it. And then yesterday we played at Roanoke, or not? Excuse me, not yesterday. Tuesday we played at Roanoke. Um, took a nine to five loss there. A lot of inexperience shown. Really, uh, some some things that we really need to clean up. And and I think. I heard yesterday you went through a play-by-play -play, uh, yeah. progression that showed that we probably should have won that ball game at least six to four. Well, we certainly should have been in the ball game much better than we were. Uh, we I took the play-by-play -play from the game. I went through the entire thing and just kind of explained where uh, mistakes occurred and how badly it hurts you when runner base runners move up just 90 feet. Um, you can create you can create a run from a, from what would be an out and a, and a non-run score just by letting the guy move up from first to second base on a throw, a dirt ball, or anything like that. And um, so we did that. And Roanoke's a really good team. They can hit. Roanoke can really hit, and they're they're going to win a lot of ball games. But um, but. Our lack of execution, both offensively, we left runners on third base with, we left you on third base with nobody out. We had a strikeout, we had a pop up the left and a strikeout, a run that could have scored. Uh, and another time we had a runner on third base with one out and we got a strikeout out of the hitter. Our hitter struck out and, you know, good, good teams, great teams, they find ways to, to battle and get those things done. And, 
and uh, in many of the cases, it's young guys at the plate that are that are uh, uh, not getting the job done. So uh, we, the, the beautiful thing about this team is uh, we're four or five. Uh, we could have won some of the games that we played, um, but we have a we have a tremendous amount of room to grow. There are teams out there that are playing really well and don't have very far to grow. Uh, we're playing okay, and we have a we have a high high ceiling we have a very athletic club we can run we've stolen 19 bases in nine games um, so we can run a little bit we can put pressure on the defense we can put pressure on opposing pitchers uh, we're starting to swing the bats a little better so I'm really looking forward to the the rest of the year right uh, and then the good cause that we talked about being a little bit late that was yesterday uh, the seniors me and, and, and the other guys got to go to run up Corellian Children's Hospital uh, take some some toys and some t-shirts, uh, go see the kids, um, talk with them, you know, just kind of try to brighten their day a little bit. Uh, and what a great experience that was. I, I talked to the team, you let me talk to the team about it yesterday, and, and it just, it shows how much this game is really, you know, in, insignificant in the, in the greater scheme of things. I, I, you say that a lot, and I, I, I love taking that. Um, but just a, a great um, experience for all of us. We all enjoyed it. Uh, and, and came away better people, I think. Yeah, so um, so children's cancer, I don't know. Things happen, but everything happens for a reason, Cover, in my opinion. And children's cancer has popped into our um, into our baseball program, and we've kind of taken it on as one of the, uh, I don't know if it's a silent thing, but a lot of people don't know. We put the, we put the children's ribbon on the back of our t-shirts that we sell, um, and we, we take the proceeds from that, the profits from that, and we send it to Carilli Children's Hospital, and we try to raise money, and we try to make visits every, the last two uh, spring breaks last year, this year, we've taken our seniors to Ch uh, Carilli Children's Hospital to visit the patients there. And, um, just try and brighten somebody's day, and, and typically what happens in those situations is we go to try and help out the patients there and the families there, and we, we come away changed as people. And uh, when you do service for other people, um, you, you change yourself inside and you gain a greater perspective of uh, what life is all about because, um, you know, those kids don't, they don't care if we win or lose ball games. They're, they're fighting battles that we can't even imagine. And uh, one day, uh, hopefully not, we pray that it doesn't happen, but one day one of our alumni, our alumni have already been affected by cancer, but somebody that probably is going to have this experience is going to have uh, cancer or some other kind of disease affect them and they're going to remember this experience and be able to draw from it to to help their own family so it's a good cause and and it's good to brighten people's day if you can right um so then hard to follow up that but we'll, we'll talk about this weekend we head down to methodist university uh, tomorrow our second weekend straight in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, so we'll play Methodist. You said we're thinking about moving the game up to 4 o'clock tomorrow? So I talked to Coach Austin this morning. Um, the weather's not bad. It's fine, but uh, it's going to get a little cooler as the sun goes down tomorrow evening. So we, the possibility is very high that we're going to move the game from 5 to 4 p.m. tomorrow um, against Methodist, and then we'll play Saturday at 1 and Sunday at 2. And, Comer, you, you know being here for four years, any – Anytime you go go to Methodist or play Methodist, it's going to be a tight ball game. It's going to be a well competed ball game. They're going to play good, and uh, they're probably not going to beat themselves. And anytime you go to Methodist, it's really hard to win. And they do they defend their home turf very well. Uh, but I'm really excited for that for that, uh, for that challenge. Me I guess. too. So uh, so we'll play them uh, next week. We play on Tuesday. I'm sure we'll still be able to get to. Uh, the show next Tuesday, but we play next Tuesday. Who do we play? We play Hampton, Sydney on the road at three o'clock, and then Wednesday we play at home. Our Finally. home opener, Finally, Finally. Right. against Emory and Henry, and I think that game's at four on okay. March day. So. Okay. So, so what do you know about uh, what do you know about Hampton, Sydney? Well, they're six and two right now. They've been swinging the bats pretty good. Um, they're always they're always a tough team for us to compete against and to beat. And uh, our schedules. Littered with uh, 
uh, we try to play the best teams we possibly can, and it's littered with good teams that are, and they're all, most of them are all having good seasons right now. So uh, it'll be a good, good, uh, a good test, another good test for us. And we'll need some young guys on the mound to step up and start throwing strikes, more strikes, and get through more hitters. And I believe that they will. And uh, you know, it's always fun mm -hmm. to compete against. To compete, Jeff Kenny's a good friend of mine. It's good to compete against your friends and good to compete against good coaches with good teams. So we'll move on to the question segment. This will be the last thing we cover. Uh, so we have a few more questions from your brother. Uh, God bless my brother. Yeah, he Eric, thank this you. Morning. Thank you for, for uh, sending in the emails. You're the only ones that sent in the, uh, the questions so far, so we really appreciate that. Uh, first, what are your fondest memories of pre-college baseball? Who was the best pre-college player that you had played? So I have to say, don't I have to say this since he sent it in that my brother was the best pre-college player that <laughs> No, um, probably a guy named Matt Smith, who actually played here at Farham, was a tremendous athlete, and uh, golly, he had, he could hit a ball a long ways, throw it really hard, and run, and, and uh, he was a he was a really good player. Played with a guy named Rodney. Um, I can't remember his last name now. Rodney played at West Virginia. He was a pitcher. Um, so there's there's some good players out there for sure. Okay, what's, what do you, you got a quick fondest memory? Uh, fondest memory, uh, we won the we won the district championship at Radford High School when I was a sophomore. The game got rained out. Um, it got rain, and there was a big controversy over whether or not we were going to start the game right where it was before or replay the whole game. Ended up we re restarted it where it was before, and it was the last inning. Our number one pitcher it was ended up being two days later. When we played it, our number one pitcher couldn't go back out on the mound, and we really didn't have anybody else, so they put me on the mound as a sophomore. <laughs> and uh, I got the first guy to, to hit a weak liner to first base and struck the next two guys out at the end of the game. And that was really my first high school experience on the mound. Yeah. Uh, so as for questions about this past week's games, uh, do you feel like you have a good grip on what the team's gonna look like in the middle of the season and then at the end of the season as well? Yeah, we're going to be a much different looking team at the end of the year than we are right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be a finely tuned machine by the end of the season, I believe. Right. Um, and how do you, this is a hard hitting question here, Eric. You kind of struck me. Uh, how do you keep an end of season collapse from occurring again, he says? So last year we, um, we lost a game to Emory and Henry after the conference tournament, lost a game to North Carolina Wesleyan that we should not have lost. Um, and in order to keep that from happening, I'm gonna throw it right back on Comer because uh, the senior leadership, the, uh, the commitment by the players, all that's gonna keep, keep any kind of um, collapse or whatever you wanna call it at the end of the year from, from occurring. And uh, this year's team uh, is a different makeup than last year's team, not that it was bad, but this year's team worked harder than any team I've, and, and when you work hard and you put so much into it, it means a whole lot more to you. And that's gonna keep us from from uh, having any letdowns at the end of the year. If I can throw any answer into that as well, I think uh, academics comes into play and, and health comes into play. Academics comes into play because we had a few guys miss uh, some games late in the year last year because we had put off some projects or, or whatever it may be. Um, and, and that ends up costing the, the team a little bit. Uh, so we need to stay ahead of our work and we need to stay healthy. We need to get in the training room. We've got a great training staff here. Um, we, we had some unfortunate events last year. Uh, Dustin Booth was our, was our main guy. Stickney, his knee was not allowing him to catch. Um, and then Dustin Booth goes down with, uh, with the sickness and, and, and that kind of was his worst timing possible uh, right there at the, at, the, at the conference tournament. And uh, so we ended up throwing Logan Alger in there, who did uh, what I thought was a pretty good job for, for, what, for what we had expected of Logan Alger at the beginning of the season. So, um, but that's, that's my answer as well. Um, but thanks for joining us here at uh, First Pitch. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday, hopefully, um, before we take on Hamden Sydney. We'll talk about the, the week that just happened and the week uh, approaching. So thanks for joining us. I'm Ty Comer along with Coach Ryan Brittle. We'll see you next week.